What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we're breaking down episode 3 of the Rings of Power. Now if you've missed a breakdown of episode 1 and 2, just go check the last two uploads on my channel. Catch up with them, then come join us back on this video. And today I'm trying some slightly different camera settings because I'm, I'm watching back my old videos and my eyes are like, don't get me wrong, I've got very blue eyes, but like on camera, for whatever reason, they just look like crazy June spice eyes, so... I'm trying, I'm trying a few different settings out today, so if it looks a bit different, that's what it is. Now, just before we start on the show itself, I couldn't help but notice the first two episodes of Rings of Power were both rated 12, in the UK at least. Uh, and that simply means it's made for an audience of anyone above the age of 12. I know, it's a very profound system. Uh, but I couldn't help but notice uh, episode 3 is a 15. Uh, so, this means, I don't know, whether there's going to be a little bit of gore, a little bit of nakedness, I don't know. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to have a little bit of spice somewhere, so... Uh, We'll have to see what that's about. And good news, this episode doesn't actually start with Galadriel. Yay, I know. But, uh, I mean, don't get too excited because she will inevitably pop up at some point. But no, we actually start with Arendir, who has drank so much, he's ended up in a Fran Bow game. But not for you! <laughs> Anyone want to tell me what's going on there? I think we might have answered the question, uh, why is this episode of 15? That, that's a little bit unexpected. And it would appear that the theme of today's episode is people waking up where they didn't think they'd be. And we join Halbrand and Galadriel on a P&O cruise. And now Galadriel is coming too. Halbrand has brought us some food. Oh, host. Saviors or captives? It's not poison, if that's your concern. Now, Galadriel is a little cautious in case the food is poison, but uh, the thing is, I thought elves were immune to illness, and, you know, obviously I assume that poison causes illness, generally, so wouldn't elves be immune to poison? And of course, it wouldn't be a scene with Galadriel without a seafaring staring contest, would it? You know, I'm starting to think that there's a bit of salt water bouncing around in that elven cranium of hers, because as she's told by the captain of the ship, who definitely isn't the High King of the Dúnedain, for spite of the exiled Numenorians, Elendil himself, it is though, but shh, don't tell anyone. Don't know if you guys can hear that, but there is some uh, very traditional British rain going on outside, and it is, it is loud. So then he explains to Galadriel that he is to answer none of her questions, and obviously Galadriel, being the giga brain that she is, immediately asks him a question. I'm obliged to deliver you safely to my betters. They will answer your questions, not I. To what port do we sail? And now begins the greatest conversation to ever be conversated, if that's even a word. To what port do we sail? See for yourself. We're nearly there. Nearly where? Home. And on this day, not a single question would be answered. And next, we arrive in Numenor, and we're greeted with a glorious giant rock-faced daddy, which, of course, uh, Galadriel attempts to engage in yet another staring contest. She's one and one so far, and yes, I am keeping score. And as they're pulling into port, they're greeted with what could be possibly the most conveniently shaped bridge I've ever seen. And I will concede that yes, the wide shot does look very nice. On a scale from uh, guinea pig to uh, Celebrimbor's Moo Moo, uh, I'll give it a six out of three. Since when did men like me build kingdoms such as this? These men are not like you. I still see your shadows in my room. Quick side note, because of my internet connection, uh, I've only been able to watch this episode in 720p. And I have to say, it's actually somewhat improved it. I know everyone's banging on about how cinematic this is and how it's born to be on the big screen. But the fact is, uh, in 720p, because of that slight deficit in quality, it actually helps blend that whole uh, this is shot on a green screen kind of look. And actually, yeah, like I say, actually helps sell some of the scenes a bit better. I found myself going, oh, that looks nice. Oh, that, 
looks nice. A little bit more than I did in the previous two episodes. And I watched the previous two episodes in full HD. So yeah, maybe the shots in this episode are done better, but I'm going to put it down to the discrepancy in PPI. And, and by PPI, I mean pixels per inch, not the weird scammy ads you used to get playing on every single ad break during the 2000s. If you had a loan or credit card in the past 10 years, you could be eligible to get compensation for missold insurance. Now, up until this point, I've not really talked about the music and that's not really a good thing because as, you know, as a musician and someone who cares about music, you know, I'd like to go into these things, but like I say, it's just not been jumping out at me. Don't get me wrong, I'm well aware of who's uh, done the score for this, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Maybe I'm speaking out of line here, but I feel like some of the pieces in this just, they feel like they belong more in a Hunger Games film than they do a Lord of the Rings project. And yes, for the third time this episode, Galadriel engages in yet another staring contest, but this time she's chosen a lowly guard as her opponent, and out of respect, he lets her win. Name thyself. Galadriel of the Noldor, daughter of the Golden House of Finarfin, commander of the northern armies of High King Gilgalad. Hold on, let me fact check this. Uh, that's a, that's a yes, a yes, and a no. It would appear you've lied on your resume, Galadriel. I mean, I wouldn't take it too personally. I mean, we all lie on our resumes at one time or another, but that's a pretty big one if you ask me. And also, shout out to any of you bookworms who recognise what this is. Now, believe it or not, I, I like to try and be reasonable every now and then, and me personally, I enjoyed the, you know, the bits of humour that were sprinkled into the uh, Peter Jackson trilogy. Nobody tosses a dwarf, and all that kind of stuff. I know not everyone was a big fan of that, but you know, I was, I was, I think I was four when the first film came out, so I really enjoyed it. And uh, in this episode, when, uh, you know, Galadriel spends God knows how long rattling off all her titles, and it cuts to Halbrand, and Halbrand just goes, uh, I I'm Halbrand. Like, I will, I will concede I did unironically chuckle. But only once. Only once. And now, back to what appears to be Prison Break Season 2, and they've got to the bottom of why the Orcs have been digging like they're in Stranger Things Season 2. This must be how they escaped our detection, and how they shield themselves from sunlight. And now the orcs want a tree cutting down because it's slowing down the work. And obviously the elves don't take too kindly to this suggestion, but the orcs being as bright as they are, they decide to speed up the work by killing the workforce. No! Wow, this show really is made by Amazon, huh? That would leave me little choice but to shout for your minders. Suppose the words never managed to escape your throat. And for the second time in this show, Galadriel threatens the life of someone who has previously saved hers. Who is this mortal who speaks to me as if he has the slightest idea who I am? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how on earth he could know that. He wasn't one of the people that was sat there for about half an hour while you were rattling off title after title after title. I don't know. Maybe that's how he feels he knows you. I think one of the things that makes Galadriel so unlikable is not the fact that she's incredibly angry and patronising towards anyone who tries to help her in any way. No, it's the fact that she's only nice to people when she knows she can get something from them. <laughs> she's literally a leech, dude. Now, I did see a comment on the last video saying something along the lines of, oh yeah, but the, the Galadriel's much younger in this. Like, she, you know, she's still got time to learn. She's still got time to grow as a character. And don't get, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I get that. And I agree with that. The only thing is, I mean, take, for example, take Breaking Bad or Narcos. Like, Walter and Pablo are both terrible, evil people. But because the writing is so competent, they're still, it's still compelling to watch them. You still like watching them. I guess the point I'm trying to make is there's a difference between a character's character and their real world likability. You see, because of a big difference in writing ability, I'm more compelled to watch a dictatorial drug lord over the Lady of Light. Liking Galadriel should be an easy sell, but they've somehow missed the mark on it and, you know, ain't that some shit. And I'm sure you can smell what's coming next. Nobody goes up there. Nobody wants to know. That's right. Nobody goes up there. And nobody wants to know. Nobody goes up there. Come on. And nobody wants to know. Uh, Mm, the Harfoots really are just one big pantomime, aren't they? And if you're wondering, yes, this little musical number does outstay its welcome and it just keeps going and going and going. Nobody goes up there. And nobody wants to know. Nobody goes up there. 
And although this little musical number might make it sound like the Harfoots are quite the inclusive lot, it actually turns out they're actually quite ableist because Hobo Baggins is scared that they're going to leave him behind because he's injured his ankle. He can't carry the cart without you. We're going to be left behind. Even though their mantra appears to be no one is left behind, if you're disabled, I guess it's another story. Sucks to be you, I guess. As Nori has been helping homeless Gandalf, by the time the village hears about this, they're not too happy. Our laws are clear. Any half-foot that breaks them is to be decap decapitated. Decaravaned. Wait, what? Decaravaned? Oh, come on! Boo! This was about to get interested! Boo! And as always, a big thank you to all the people that have decided to help my channel behind the scenes. Of course, we have the Tier 2 Gigachards! We've got Steve the Goat, Pozzabon, and Said. We've got the Tier 1 Patrons. We've got Abe Froman, Sammy Moraine, Brennis, Damon Spike, Chloe Bond, Lord Claret, Brett Leafers, and we're welcoming Arkham Spider. Good to have you on the channel. And then we've got the channel members. We've got Kuno Sacco, and we've got Yarn Witch. As always, I can't tell you how much I really appreciate your support. It's more than just monetary. It's, it's, it's emotional support as well. It's nice to know that uh, there are people out there willing to support you. So thank you for that. And don't forget, anyone who joins the Patreon or becomes a channel member by the end of the month, at the end of the month, I'm getting a big art piece done with all your names on it, and it's going to go on the back wall. And that's it for episode three. There was like 20 minutes or so at the end of the episode that I didn't really go into because... I just didn't really have a lot to work with. But what did you guys think of episode three? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe so you can join me for any future breakdowns as well. But until then, make sure you take care of yourselves, guys. Drop a like on the video, please. Thank you.